To me, SwitchBot is always looking for ways to make a smart home device and add additional features that aren't necessarily mainstream, but add value while still keeping prices affordable, and they seem to do it again with the SwitchBot Hub too. While typical smart home hubs just have one function serving as a controller for your smart home devices, the SwitchBot Hub 2 has several other features crammed into it that really make it stand out from the crowd. Hello and welcome back! In this video, we'll be taking a look at the SwitchBot Hub 2 and its multiple built-in sensors, built-in physical buttons that can drive automations, matter bridge capabilities, and so much more. Take note that while SwitchBot was nice enough to send me a demo unit to take a look at, the opinions in this video are my own, and there's not been any outside influence, monetary or otherwise. The SwitchBot Hub 2 has a built-in humidity, temperature, and light sensor. All three sensors can also be used to drive SwitchBot automations, such as closing curtains when it's too bright out, or turning on a fan when it's too warm in a room. The SwitchBot Hub 2 displays the temperature and humidity level right on itself, which between the information display and two built-in automation buttons means you can keep your hub right on your desk and not have to worry about trying to hide it away somewhere. The SwitchBot Hub 2 includes Matter support, which will allow for some older SwitchBot Bluetooth devices to be controlled over Matter by using the Hub 2 as a proxy. Right out the gate, this will include Matter support for the SwitchBot Curtain and SwitchBot Tilt. More are planned to be added, but SwitchBot has not provided any information on what or when. The addition of Matter support is huge, not only because of Matter itself, but because Matter support on the Hub 2 will allow for you to bring in SwitchBot devices into Apple HomeKit to allow for device control and automations, which I know there was a lot of people waiting for HomeKit support. There are also a few things you want to keep in mind when it comes to Matter support, which I'll be covering later in this video. The SwitchBot Hub 2 has a lot of new features, and it will still allow for you to control any of your SwitchBot Bluetooth devices from anywhere in the world with an internet connection, meaning you no longer have to be within Bluetooth range of your SwitchBot devices to control them. The Hub 2 will also still allow for you to integrate your SwitchBot devices into other smart home platforms, such as SmartThings, Google Home, and Amazon Voice Assistant. The SwitchBot Hub 2 costs $70 USD and is now shipping. I'll have affiliate links in the description below, which helps out with making videos like this one without any added cost to you, and I always appreciate it. I'll also have a promo code in the description below that you can use to save 15% off the SwitchBot Hub 2. Just keep in mind that that code is only available until May 10th. Just like the Hub Mini, the SwitchBot Hub 2 also has IR control functionality built in and it actually has been upgraded to provide an even larger coverage area to help control devices such as TVs and air conditioners. The actual temperature and humidity sensor is built into the US cable of the SwitchBot Hub 2. I both like and dislike this design decision. It's nice because it moves it away from the components that generate heat to allow for a more accurate reading, but restricts you from getting a different colored power cord or getting a cable that is a length that might better suit your needs. Also, if you have a pet that likes to chew on cables, you won't be able to just use any cable to power it. Not a deal breaker to me, but something I feel you should be aware of, and maybe consider picking up a cable protector if you have any hungry pets in your home. The SwitchBot Hub 2 also has improved wireless connectivity over the Hub Mini, which should translate into a more stable connection to the Hub and other devices directly connected to it. Setup of the SwitchBot Hub 2 is simple just like every other SwitchBot product. First plug in the SwitchBot Hub 2, and then from within the SwitchBot app, click on the plus sign at the top right hand side of the screen. You should already see Hub 2 listed under nearby Bluetooth devices, and if you do, you can click on it. Otherwise, click on Hub 2 under the Hub section. Next, press and hold the two touch buttons for about two seconds until the indicator light starts flashing. Then click on Next within the app. On the next page, you'll need to select your wireless network, enter in your wireless password. Keep in mind that the SwitchBot Hub 2 does not support 5 GHz wireless networks. It must be connected to a 2.4 GHz wireless network. A quick tech tip. If you constantly have smart home devices having issues connecting to your dual band 5 GHz and 2.4 GHz wireless networks, you may be better off just having a 2.4 GHz wireless network created like I did. After you enter in your wireless network information, you can click on Next. Once your hub has successfully connected to your wireless network, you'll be prompted to give it a name, and assign it a room if you want. Once you're all set, click on Save. You should then get a success message indicating that the hub has been properly set up. If you get a warning message at the top of your screen indicating the temperature units do not match between the app and the hub, click on Sync to correct the issue. This will automatically configure the unit of measurement on the hub with what you have set within the SwitchBot app. From within the app, you'll be able to see the temperature, humidity, and light level reported from the hub. Clicking on the card will allow you to see historical data as well. You're also able to add IR remotes right from the main page on the hub too. And you can program the two scene buttons as well. To add an IR control device, click on the red Add Remote Control button. On the new screen, you'll be presented with several different types of devices supported currently, along with an other option, to try to add in device types not listed. Selecting the type of device you are adding will give it three options. Smart matching, selecting manually, and button learning. Smart matching will try to figure out the model and button layout of the device based on the initial IR signal being sent. 
Choosing this option will prompt you to wait until the light on your hub goes out before pressing the power button on your remote while pointing it at the hub too. If any templates are found, you'll be instructed to try out the power button within the app of each template to see if the device, which is a TV in my case, responds. If you find a template that works, you'll be prompted to give the device a name and assign it to a room within the SwitchBot app. After saving the device, you'll be presented with all the different buttons from the template where you can test them out, edit which ones are visible, and manually learn any that don't work or are missing. And with testing out the newly created device, my SwitchBot Hub 2 is now able to control my TV. Keep in mind that infrared does require line of sight, so you will not be able to control devices in other rooms. I would have really liked to see the ability to mimic RF remotes, which is what all my ceiling fans are, and it also allows for controlling devices in other rooms, maybe in a SwitchBot Hub 3. Under settings for the Hub 2, you'll have several different options for things you can tweak. You can update your wireless settings, make changes to the backlight and sounds for the Hub, set desired conditions, which can be used for alerting, calibrate the Hub's sensors, set up SwitchBot NOC tags for automations, check the logs, open the user guide, update firmware, and find out additional information about the device. Under backlight and sound, you're able to turn off the indicator light, control when it lights up, turn off both temperature and humidity readings, turn off the scene button lights, enable auto brightness adjustment, and turn off the beep of the hub. Under desired conditions, you can enable an alert for the temperature and humidity if you want, and set the desired ranges for each. When either status goes outside of the range, you'll be notified. The calibration section allows for you to calibrate both the temperature and humidity sensors so that they are as accurate as possible. Keep in mind that you do need an accurate reference for the calibration process. Not only can you use the built-in light sensor of the Hub 2 to drive SwitchBot automations, but can it also be used to automatically adjust the brightness of the information display, which I find very clever. But what if you already have a SwitchBot Hub and want to upgrade to a Hub 2 to add in matter support or take advantage of some of the other new features of the Hub 2? Luckily, switching already set up SwitchBot devices to a new Hub is pretty straightforward. From within the app, select the device you want to move over and click on the cog on the right-hand side of the screen. On the new screen, click on Cloud Services. Next, take a look at the Hub ID. If it has the name of your new Hub, then you're actually all set. If it says Not Connected, that means you have Cloud Services turned off and you need to enable them with the toggle above. Enabling Cloud Services will then give you a pop-up allowing you to choose the correct Hub you want. If the name of the Hub ID listed is wrong, simply click on it to be given a pop-up window of possible Hub options. Select your desired hub to change it over. Keep in mind that you will need to follow these steps for every device connected to a hub that you want to move over to a new hub. Okay, so let's talk about Matter now. To get started, at the time of recording this video, Matter is still beta for SwitchBot. I'm not sure when it will come out of beta either, so just keep that in mind. To set up Matter with an Android phone, you need to make sure your hub and app are updated to the latest version. Then you can go into the settings for the Hub 2 within the SwitchBot app and navigate to Matter Configuration. From here, you'll be presented with the Matter QR code that you can save to your phone, as well as the numeric code you can copy. I strongly encourage you to make sure you copy the code. Clicking on the top Matter Configuration button will then walk you through setting up the hub into Matter Pairing Mode. Keep in mind that this will reset your hub and wipe practically all settings of it except for IR devices and historical data. A quick tech tip. Before onboarding the SwitchBot Hub 2 to Matter, make sure your phone is connected to the wireless network you want the hub connected to. For my phone, I found that when I was originally connected to a 5 GHz wireless network, which the hub cannot connect to, it failed matter pairing, and it would continue to fail even after switching my phone to a 2.4 GHz wireless network. In order for pairing to work properly, I had to close out of the matter pairing process for the new SSID to be used for onboarding. To enter pairing mode, hold both the off and on buttons on the hub for roughly 20 seconds. The app currently says to hold it for 15 seconds, but I found you had to wait around 20 seconds for it to actually enter pairing mode. You'll know the hub entered pairing mode when it beeps for a third time with a longer beep. After the hub's in pairing mode, your phone should automatically pop up with the Matter Device Setup Prompt, which if it does, you can click on Scan QR Code. You'll then need to scan the QR code on the back of the hub if yours has one. Otherwise, click on Set Up with QR Code to enter in the code we copied from the SwitchBot app earlier. You'll then need to select the app you want to pair with Matter. In the case of my Pixel 6 Pro, the Google Home app is shown by default. If I select the Choose Other App option, it'll show me any of the other installed apps that support Matter. For initial pairing, I'm going to pick Google Home. For Google Home pairing, you'll then be prompted to agree to connecting the device to your Google Home. Once you agree, the device will finish going through onboarding. Once added, I found the hub under the In Your Home section, with two sensors also. One for the built-in temperature sensor and one for the built-in humidity sensor. Next, we need to actually expose the SwitchBot devices to Matter through the hub too. To do this, go back into the SwitchBot app and open the settings for the Hub 2. 
Under Matter Configuration, select Add on the Secondary Devices button. A new screen will open, showing all the SwitchBot devices currently able to be shared over Matter. Select the devices you want and select OK. You can also come back to add more or to remove any if you need to in the future. After you have selected the SwitchBot devices you want shared over Matter, you can go back into the Google Home app and the new devices should be visible within the app. For Google Home, you can click on a SwitchBot curtain to toggle between an open or closed state. And if you long press it, you'll be presented with a slider to adjust how open you want the window to be. You'll also be able to change the name and room assignment from the settings of the device from here as well. And with that, we've successfully set up the SwitchBot Hub 2 to share SwitchBot curtain bots with Google Home over Matter. But there are some things I'd like to mention and go over when it comes to Matter on the SwitchBot Hub 2. One thing that is a bit annoying is that the SwitchBot curtains are viewed as blinds within the Google Home app. So the slider is up or down, not side to side like a normal window. Also, all the SwitchBot devices I added came in under the name of the hub. I had to go around to each room opening and closing curtains to figure out which devices were what because the names did not come over from SwitchBot. I'd like to reiterate the Matter support is still in beta, and I was able to see that through my setup. It works, but I did have to try a few times to get things going properly. And at first, devices were not always that quick to respond when trying to control them through the Google Home app. I actually had better response times using the voice assistant at first. Open the office curtain. All right, opening the office curtain. But over the course of several days, things did become more responsive. I'm not sure if this is from tweaks being done by SwitchBot on the back end during my testing before release or not, or if you might experience similar unresponsiveness for the first few days. At the time of this recording, the light sensor, automation buttons, and IR devices are not shared over matter, only temperature and humidity are. I did ask SwitchBot about IR devices being shared, and they indicated they are looking into having IR devices that are added to the hub shared over matter. They gave no time frame or promises at this point, but hopefully they'll be able to get it working. I was also not able to get the Hub 2 paired with SmartThings over Matter at this time. With being beta still though, that's not very surprising. I also noticed that if I opened or closed my curtains, either through the SwitchBot app or manually, then the devices within Google Home did not update, so it's best to use the Voice Assistant or Google Home app for the time being. While there is a limit of six devices that you can currently add via Matter, you can group curtains or SwitchBot tilts together for a single room, and that group only counts as one Matter device. This is an easy way to add more than six devices over Matter from SwitchBot. Keep in mind, the SwitchBot Hub 2 is not a Matter bridge, and you will not be able to connect other Matter compatible devices to it. Overall, I think if you're just starting out with SwitchBot and going to be picking up a Hub, the Hub 2 makes the most sense over the Hub Mini, as it will allow for you to future-proof connectivity with Matter support, and with its built-in temperature, humidity, scene buttons, and light sensor, you are technically saving a good amount of money compared to buying them all separately. I'd love to know what features you'd like to see added to the SwitchBot Hub 2, or maybe even a SwitchBot Hub 3, so make sure to let me know in the comments below. And if you have any questions about something I didn't cover, don't hesitate to ask. If you're looking for some smart home automation inspiration, make sure to check out this video right here. In this video, we'll be going over several different smart home automations you can set up to save money and time. If you found this video helpful, make sure to give it a thumbs up as it makes me feel good about myself. But more importantly, signals to YouTube that they should share it with others. And consider subscribing to the channel and enabling notifications to be one of the first to know when I release other smart home related videos just like this one. Thank you for watching and happy automating.